Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good night or whatever time you're tuned in to. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend is where I, as the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church, let you know the heads up for our weekend. Before I let you know the heads up for the weekend, I want to give you a heads up on the church or church home. Somebody's listening at the sound of my voice and you just moved to Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, or you do not have a church home, or you just got saved. The word of God says, forsake not the assembly together of believers. And we want to extend this personal invitation for you to assemble with us this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. It's a one hour service. Uh, come dressed as you are, casual. And we would love to welcome you into our body of Christ here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Bring a family member or a friend with you. And again, join us this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service, one hour service once again. And also, uh, before you come, we want to extend an invitation for you to visit us on our website. Our website is at Bethlehem.com. Again, our website is www.HearGodsWordAtBethlehem.com. And there you can get to know us. And once you get to know us, why don't you go ahead and click the Facebook tab, the Instagram tab, the Twitter tab, the LinkedIn tab, and follow us and friend us in what I call Cyber Church. And we have a large Cyber Church family. But what we're concerned about today is you becoming a part of the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church, 311 North Dunbar. Bring a family member or a friend and meet me at the 11 a.m. service this coming Sunday, April the 24th, 2022, in Jesus' name. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend. Uh, first, before I give you the heads up for the weekend, I just want to let you know or do a guess who's game. Guess who? Uh, some of you may know who this person is behind me, and I'll tell you where we are. We're at Pumpkins today, and if you don't know who that is, uh, some of you may know. I don't know if many of you have met him in person, but you probably heard his name. Uh, his name is Bishop Broderick. Huggins, Bishop Huggins, uh, my bishop's best friend. And we I got to meet with him today at Pumpkins. And he loved the food there at Pumpkins. And this is a prelude to our revival. So I thought since he visited today, I would go ahead and tell you, Bethlehem and Saints of God, uh, to mark your calendars for October the 3rd through the 5th. 2022, because Bishop, Bishop Broderick Huggins is going to be our evangelist, and uh, we're excited about him coming, so excited. I said, since well, since he showed up today, I'm going to go ahead and let us know we need to mark our calendars, October the 3rd through the 5th, as we will go into revival, and it was good to see him today. And, and as you could see, he had a good time. We had a good time in fellowship today. Um, saints of God, be praying for him as he's traveling to Philadelphia, traveling mercies and traveling grace. And he just dropped in on me today. So uh, that's our guess who game today. But back to heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend. Tomorrow, you know, saints, uh, we're spotlighting prayer and we have a lot to pray about. And we're asking you to pray with us uh, on tomorrow, April the 22nd, 2022, as we're fasting and praying that God will enable us to keep uh, COVID-19 under our feet, even as they say the COVID-19 is increasing across our nation and much controversy about the mask and wearing it and not, but we're going to continue to pray Bethlehem. We're going to fast and pray that God would deliver us from COVID-19, COVID-19 effects and COVID-19 variances. Remember, we're fasting and praying for our church. And if you pray with us, 
fast and pray for your church. We fast and praying for our city, fasting and praying for the counties, make up this great state of Oklahoma, as well as fasting and praying for our country that God will give us and keep us victorious over amongst the COVID-19 uh, effects. Also, we want you to fast and pray. Uh, we challenge you yesterday to not sleep on fasting and praying in regards to what's going, going on in the Ukraine uh, today or yesterday. And uh, I told you, Bethlehem, don't sleep on fasting and praying, number one. Then I told you, don't sleep on fasting and praying for this Ukraine situation because I said one act of aggression could lead us into World War III. World War III. And yesterday, uh, the Russians test a missile, a missile that they call Satan II, literally. NATO, I think, calls this missile Satan II. And this missile can get and to, can reach America or any part with a nuclear missile can reach. That was testing it yesterday. Anywhere in the world, they like to say the United States. And uh, they were showing, the, the great bear is showing his teeth and claws to try to get us out of uh, helping the Ukraine. And uh, this is why I say, uh, church, saints of God, don't sleep on our times. We must fast and pray that God will rebuke uh, uh, Russia as he has been doing. And this is what makes this so dangerous is because uh, they have been failing for the most part with ground troops, but they're still a nuclear power. And this is what they can do. They can put uh, nuclear warheads uh, on this missile and it can reach anywhere. So we need to continue to fast and pray for the Ukraine and really fast and praying for our, for really ourselves, as I've been trying to get uh, Christian folk to know. And as I've been saying, that America was hesitant to get involved with uh, World War II because it didn't affect us. But what we don't realize is that everywhere is world now. It can. Uh, we've seen that uh, North Korea testing their mi missiles to reach us. They always be concerned about reaching us. So we better be concerned about rebuking the satanic forces that are coming against us and every Christian nation in Jesus' name. So we fast and pray for Ukraine, fast and pray for peace, fast and pray that God would rebuke uh, all of this uh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We don't have to be fear mongers. We can fast and pray that God would take care of all of this and also fast and pray about some other things that have happened in the world today. A great flood happened, I believe in South Africa, killed 400 people, fast and pray for that. Those people, there are many uh, fires that are taking place in, in the United States, uh, I believe uh, throughout the West. Fast and pray church. The Bible says that we are salt and light. And as salt and light is our job to occupy until Jesus comes back again. And in order for us to do that, we have to do what the church is supposed to do is to be a house of prayer in Jesus name. We are asking and praying that you also fast and pray uh, for Patrick's uh, family, a young man that was killed in Michigan, shot in the back of the head by a police officer and, uh, Another uh, case uh, why we and the Black Lives Matters movement is, is upset is because this was a, a traffic stop. And I, and I share uh, many instances of traffic stops, a broken taillight, failure to signal. Um, and it, it escalates to the death that seems to be mostly of black and brown people. And I, I share this in my book. You wanna get this book and understand why we feel the way we feel in our times, 
Uh, you can get it at my Amazon Arthur's page, uh, amazon.com backslash Arthur backslash Reverend Dr. Michael Eton, R-E-B-D-R, Michael, E-A-T-O-N. But I share in, the, in my book, this stuff should not be happening, escalating, taking folks' lives over traffic stop. The crime does not meet the punishment. And, and, and so I'm, 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 I'm passionate about this, and I know some of you are as well. And, and people wonder why we say Black Lives Matters. It's because this happens. But I also said in my, um, uh, the subtitle of my book is All Lives Matters, which I try to teach the value of life. If you valued life, you wouldn't allow these kind of situations to escalate into death. So we're fasting and praying for this family on Friday as they funeralize their son, Patrick. And, um, and we just ask you to continue to pray for their family and, and pray for us as America. In 2020, we said Black Lives Matters. But in 2022, it's still happening. So church, family, and people of God, we got to continue to fast and pray. Also, fast and pray tomorrow as we continue to keep Brittany Griner on our list. We continue to keep uh, Travis Reed and Paul Whalen up on our list, who are political pawns. They seem to be uh, as a result there in Russia. And, and I, these guys have my, my, the burden of my heart because they're in an, an impossible situation. And I like Daniel who found uh, himself in an impossible situation. The, the, the king wanted his dream to be interpreted, but he wouldn't tell people what the dream was to be interpreted. But Daniel remembered that there was a God who could do both. Hello, somebody. Uh, and I believe we, have, we serve a God that can do more than the State Department, uh, more than our ambassador to Russia, more than the uh, attorneys, uh, that they have work, working on the case, even more than our president. And we're gonna intercede uh, for all three, Brittany, Travis, and brother Paul. And we're gonna continue to fast and pray for them in Jesus name. And we have a great uh, testimony. We fast and pray for those missionaries, all of them who are supposed they wanted a million dollars a piece, over 20 missionaries, and they all were released. So we've got a testimony. All we have to do is to continue to believe in Jesus' name. Also, Bethlehem, heads up for the weekend, heads up for the weekend, and we're excited about our weekend as always. And you know, we are a church that is a teaching church and teaching churches are very, very excited about Sunday school. Let me say it again. Teaching churches are all very, very excited about Sunday school. And we're excited about this weekend Sunday school. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Remember, Bethlehem, I send the codes out, uh, the Zoom codes out with this video tonight. And uh, for those who don't uh, have, uh, not a part of the pastor's text to get that, you can join us uh, this coming Sunday on our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash Pastor Michael Eton. And you can listen to our Sunday School live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. And we also do Sunday School live on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, but Bethlehem, you know, we need to meet in the sanctuary at uh, 10 a.m. or in Zoom. But this is our, our lesson. We're under a new series, uh, starting a new series uh, this Sunday. And the series is entitled, uh, and it's very prophetic, Jesus's Return, Living with the End in Mind. This is the new series, Jesus's Return, Living with the End in Mind. We know as we look at what's happening amongst the nations, we're concerned that this could be the end times. 
So the Lord has sovereignly gotten us in this study. Christ's return, living with the end in mind. And uh, we're going to be uh, looking at Matthew 24, verses 1 through 14. Matthew 24, verses 1 through 14. And uh, we want you to uh, look at page 94 in your book as we study uh, this coming Sunday's lesson. We're excited about it. And we want you to pass those goals out. Feel free to send them uh, in your uh, text to family members and friends. And we have people all over the nation who join in. So feel free to join in either on Facebook or through the pastor's text. We look forward to uh, Sunday school this weekend. Heads up for the weekend. Not only are we in Sunday school, but we've been encouraging people to continue to come back in Jesus' name. If you have not been back in a while, uh, we want you to come this Sunday, April 24th, 11 a.m. to the 11 a.m. service. Uh, we'd love to see you back in the place. And also, we've been uh, encouraging visitors to join us uh, this Sunday at the 11 a.m. service, one-hour service. Uh, so we encourage you to either come for the first time or to come back in Jesus' name. Tonight, uh, we're going to share a brief devotional thought um, in our series, Heads Up for the Weekend, in our series, and we're coming to the end of our series entitled the Miracle Messiah series, the Miracle Messiah series. And, and this series is based on John chapter 21, verses 25. And we've been telling you all month long that we've been following the miracles of Jesus, over 30 miracles he's done on the face of scripture that we can see. John says there are more, so much more. He supposed that the world uh, couldn't, itself could not contain the books um, to record all that Jesus did. So we just have a sample size of his miracles in the Bible. And from his miracles, he was teaching us that he was different. He was the Messiah. And we led this into our resurrection Sunday time as, we were, as he was proving that he was the Messiah. And now we're going to pull back and see some other things he did before he went back to the cross. But I want to encourage you, if you uh, did not get to listen to Wednesday's message entitled The Miracle of the Catch, The Miracle of the Catch, you can go up on our Facebook page and uh, get the link uh, to listen either through our YouTube or through our podcast. And you can click any link in our YouTube or podcast to get to it. And we want you to uh, subscribe to it. And then we want you to move to the, the most recent message there. Uh, but this was an awesome message on the miracle of catch. So if you didn't get to listen to that, make sure you go up there and do that. Um, but to Sunday's message, it's always like to do is to, to kind of give a a brief devotional thought on the Sunday's message that is coming because some folk won't be able to make it to Sunday. And we're going to be looking at this Sunday, a brief devotional thought, remember, on Luke chapter 17, 19 through or 11 through 19. Let me read this in your hearing and then we'll give some thoughts and give our final announcements and and uh, dismiss you until we see, see you again this weekend at Bethlehem. It says, now on, verse, uh, uh, verse 11, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And he was going into the village. Ten men who, were, who had leprosy met him, and they stood at a distance. And called out in a loud, loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And he saw them, and he said, go, show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. 
one of them, when they saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, where not all 10 cleanse? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to the Lord except the foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Most of the time when we preach this text, we preach about the attitude of gratitude, usually during Thanksgiving time, an attitude of gratitude because of the 10 lepers in this text who stood afar off and shouted to Jesus to have pity on them. Uh, he told them to go. They went and they all were cleansed. And this one man, and Jesus was going talking, uh, trying to teach a, a lesson to the people of God in this text. I can't touch on it tonight. I definitely would touch on it on Sunday because Jesus had a way of sticking their nose in it. But this one person who was a foreigner, a Samaritan, came back and gave Jesus thanks. He had that attitude of gratitude, and attitude of gratitude is always appropriate. You should always be grateful for what God has done. Even in the bad times, you should be grateful. There's always something to be grateful for what God has done. Um, but I'm not going to touch on the gratefulness factor tonight, uh, or the gratitude factor tonight. Uh, perhaps on Sunday, we will deal with that. But I want to focus on your faith has made you well. Because somebody's listening at the sound of my voice and you're in a hopeless and helpless situation. And you may feel like uh, life is hopeless and helpless, even as you've uh, heard some of the things that we are fasting and praying. Say, Jesus, uh, preacher, why do you always mention all these detrimental things that are going on in our nation, in our world, the fires and the floods and the wars and the rumors of wars? I mention it because I believe and have the faith that God can uh, Rebuke the satanic forces that are at work in our world today. I do that because I believe that God has called us to be salt and light. What does uh, salt do? Salt preserves. Uh, and, and the earth must be preserved until Jesus comes back again. So this is why we intercede and this is why we pray. And you can't pray unless you have faith that God has the power over the nations, over the floods, over the fires, over the wars, and over the rumors of wars. It takes faith to believe that God has that kind of power. And as somebody tonight, you're in another helpless situation, another hopeless situation that you're facing. You are separated out. You, you've been living uh, uh, amongst those who are ailing like you're ailing. You've been living in the hospital uh, and nobody's getting well. You, you, you've been hanging out at the unemployment office and nobody's finding a job. Uh, and, and, and the situation seems hopeless, but God says, tonight. Your faith has made you well. If you can believe that God has the power, oh, then tonight your life can never be the same. All you have to do is stand at a distance because you're not holy enough to be in the presence of God. Stand at a distance and beg God to have mercy on your situation. Have mercy oh, on my church, oh brother the pastors have mercy on my marriage have mercy at my job have mercy on my city have 
mercy, Lord, on the Ukraine. Have, have mercy, Lord, on uh, with Brittany and Paul uh, and Travis, Lord Jesus. Uh, have mercy. We stand out uh, at a distance and say, Lord, we're, we're not holy enough to, to be in your presence, but, but Lord, have mercy on this earth uh, in Jesus' name. Lord, have mercy and allow our faith uh, all to cause healing uh, right now in Jesus' name. Deliverance uh, right now in Jesus' name. Uh, provision right now in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, allow our faith uh, to make us whole tonight uh, for somebody who couldn't make it to Sunday. You sent this word uh, on a Thursday night, April all oh, the, the, the 21st, uh, first, uh, oh, because they couldn't make it to the 24th. Jesus, uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, work and move uh, on behalf of your people who have faith right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, church, I, I can't give you any more. This is just devotional thought. But tonight, God says your faith can make you whole. You don't have to wait till Sunday. Right now, your faith can make you whole. Your faith can heal you. Your faith can deliver you. You believe in the God that you serve in Jesus' name. Come back, if you will, either during our live time on Sunday, we'll be broadcasting or streaming live. Uh, better yet, if you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, you don't have a church home, hey, we want to see you in the place. If you just got saved, we want to see you in the place. Just move to Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. We want to see you this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. Come as you are. We would love to accept you in the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Heads up for the weekend, the last announcement that we have. We've been telling you and challenging you to mark your calendars for Sunday, May the 15th, 2022, when, Pat, when Sister Eton and I celebrate our 15th year anniversary service. Uh, old Reverend Pastor Twan T. Jones is going to come all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's shutting down his 11 o'clock service to join us at Bethlehem at 11 o'clock. And we want to invite you to be a part of that Bethlehem. Let's get ready to celebrate. And we are excited to be in prayer because we're going to be with them two weeks before. Uh, Sister Eton is going to be uh, speaking at a leadership school slash revival that they're having. And and then I'm going to preach for them as well. So we're swapping pulpits, as they say. And we're excited about the interchange. And we're excited about this anniversary service, May the 15th, 2022. Uh, we're excited about that. But this has been Heads Up for the Weekend. And lastly, Bethlehem and Saints of God, we always challenge you to stay connected, Bethlehem. Stay connected, saints of God. Stay connected to God's person. You do that through fervent prayer. Stay connected to God's precepts. You do that through the study of the word. Wednesday night study. I give you uh, the text so that you can go and study before Sunday. I tell you about Sunday school so you can study before Sunday school on Sunday. Uh, that's staying connected to God's precepts. Also, stay connected to God's people. And that's when we want to meet you this coming Sunday, because this is where we assemble together as the word of God says. So, Bethlehem, stay connected. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.